Jason here with a tutorial now covering having rigged our character, um, how to do its basic animation blocking. All right, so you should be start looking at something like this. Okay, you can see we've got all of our different types of controllers. Um, and we just kind of want to set up this space in such a way that it's a little bit easier to work around. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to close all of these. All right, because we don't need these and they're kind of just getting in the way. So we're going to adjust our work panel uh, to sort of be dedicated strictly towards animating this particular project. All right, so once I've gotten rid of all of these, what I can then do is I can just hit window, come down to do it basil, um, open up that window, and then I'm just going to dock it here on the, the right hand side of the screen for me. Okay, and I can just sort of drag that back in. Okay, the next thing I can do, as everything has already been parented for you, I can right click on the parent link sort of name over here, just right click and I can say hide this, All right? So that just gets rid of any superfluous information we don't need. If I ever need it back, I can always right click, hover over columns and bring back parents and link as so. All right, so we can hide that. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to change where our timeline is and you'll see why in a moment. Okay, so I'm going to just quickly click and drag and I'm going to dock my timeline here on the left. And I can just sort of close over my project panel there because I don't need any of that information. Okay, so now we can actually see our entire timeline. This is why we've set it up this way. So we've got half our screen dedicated towards our character, the other class, uh, half, excuse me, dedicated towards our layers. All right, and you'll see that these layers have been color coded. Um, if I hit the shy button, you'll see that there are plenty more layers hidden away, but all of them have been color, co uh, color coded um, as necessary. All right, so we've got all the, the sort of colors pertaining to the left arm in red, all of the ones pertaining to the right arm in green, anything towards the torso is purple. We have sort of like a cyan color for the left leg, and we have a magenta color for the right leg. All right, and then we've got dark green for our left shoe and sandstone for our right shoe, okay? Blue for the head, and then a nice big arrow at the top to move our entire character. All right, so let me just shy these back up again and walk you through how this particular rig works, okay? Um, spent a little bit of time on it. Hopefully it is working correctly. Um, it was in class with my students. So if you find any issues or mistakes, feel free to drop a comment and I will adjust uh, the rig as necessary. Okay, so the very first layer, character controller, layer one in green, refers to our sort of God controller. All right, so whenever I move this or rotate this or scale it, it will affect my entire character. All right, and that is set up in such a way that um, our key controllers are parented to that. All right, but I'll cover that or depending when this video is watched, have covered that in the reading tutorial. All right, um, so the next thing I wanna do is I just wanna click, you'll see when I hover over the head and I click, I've got my mask surrounding that head. All right, so I just want to unshy, find the layer for the head. There it is, layer 30, and I'm just going to lock it. All right, and that means we're not going to accidentally play with that mask. All right, one of the things I forgot to do in uh, the work files that I provided you guys. Okay, so that's good, the, the sort of God controller. In the sort of timeline, you'll see that we've got some gray blocks. All right, so layer 2, 6, 19, 32, 36, 53, 57, and 65. And these are what control um, sort of like the main limbs. So these are the, the direct hierarchies or the, the direct leaders of our limb chains. All right. So anything I do with my C arm left God controller, for example, and anyone that starts with a star is itself a God controller. If I bring up my rotation, I can rotate the entire arm. All right. And I can also then move it as necessary. Okay. Same with the feet, same with the legs, etc. All right. There are a couple of things that drive more than just um, their pertaining limb. So, for example, our hip torso controller over here, layer six. If I move that back and forth, you'll see that it also adjusts where my sort of legs bend and how it is clipped towards the head. All right. If I were to rotate the neck, it's going to move my head and my arms. Uh, so that's that's that. Um, and then if you get lost and you find yourselves trying to find, for example, the bottom of the neck controller, which is hidden underneath some layers, always just click on one of the colors that um, you're kind of looking for, and then at least you'll find it on your timeline as necessary. So if I change the rotation for the head, 
um, doesn't do much. But if I bring and move my points, you'll see that my head is adjusted and my cap is adjusted accordingly. Okay. And then we've got our major head controller hidden behind the arm here, uh, guard head controller. And if I change my rotation here, this allows me to change my head and I can move my head up and down depending on what I need to do. All right. Um, and then I think that's about it in terms of basic rig. Um, some other things to keep in mind, for example, is that the wrist controllers, uh, these control where the hand rotates. Okay. Um, so not only when it moves does it drag the, the sort of hand with it, but it also will rotate then accordingly. All right. Um, for the shoes, you'll see that when you move the shoe, it also bends the leg. All right. So that's why when we move the, the pelvis, our shoes sort of stay behind. Okay, so that means that we have this controller to add some rotation to the shoe as necessary and the shoe can actually then drive the position of our leg. All right, so it's going to take a little bit of work. It's not a controller, right? These are all just bones created from puppet pins. Um, so moving the foot is not going to drive the knee up and down, but it will sort of provide a little bit of intrinsic bending to begin with. Okay, let me just zoom out over here. So. What we want to do with this is we kind of want to block out the major keyframes of our animations. All right. So you guys have recorded your, your trial video footage, right? So you know what kind of poses you want your character to be in. And the purpose of this tutorial, which will hopefully be a bit of a quick one because the process is actually quite easy, um, is just to walk you through the blocking process. All right. So blocking out our key poses and then allowing us to um, add our smooths and our in-betweens later down the line. Okay, so the next thing I want you to do just to set this workspace up a little bit better as well, um, something that I forgot to change before I uploaded the file for you guys was just how long the composition is. Uh, we're not doing a 30 second animation. So I'm going to hit Command or Control K, which will bring up our composition settings. And I just want to change this information over here. This determines how long our timeline is. And I want to change this to 0, 05, for example. And I can just hit enter. And now we have a little bit of a more zoomed in timeline to work with. Okay, and I can sort of just drag that back out again. Okay, so what I'm going to do is very first of all, I'm going to hit control or command A to select all of my layers. All right, so everything lights up. You'll see that the, the assets themselves don't light up, right? It's all just the controllers. And now the reason for this is that I've locked the assets, as you can see here, everything except the torso itself. Um, and <clears throat> that means that we're not going to accidentally, for example, play with our bones, play with our assets, um, you know, determining, determined rather by the layers, um, the asset layers. All right, so. <clears throat> If I sort of hide those again, you'll see, okay, we have in fact also sort of selected these layers here, but these are what we're going to sort of animate if we're going to move our fingers. All right. So they can kind of just stay on screen for now. Okay. So with everything selected, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit P for position and I'm going to hit shift and press R for rotation. All right. So that opens up our position and rotation values for all of our selected layers. And I'm going to click on the stopwatch for each of them. And because they're all selected, they will then uh, create keyframes for every single value for every layer that we have selected. And I believe that it is control option A. Yep. Uh, control option A or control alt A, I believe on Windows, will select every single one of your keyframes that is on screen. So unfortunately, we are going to have to then go down still and uh, just drag and select the last of those. Um, because we want every single one of our keyframes selected at this point. Um, okay, so we have all of our keyframes selected. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to right click on any one of them. And I want to select toggle hold keyframe. Now, the reason I'm doing this is so that if we mess up to the point where we can't fix it, and sometimes these um, sort of rigs can get to that point if we make a mistake, we can always then jump back to the very beginning of our pose. And we could like, for example, start that limb from scratch or the torso from scratch. Um, unfortunately, sometimes with character animation, it is easier to start from scratch than spending hours trying to fix something. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to hold down um, command and shift and hit my right arrow key on a Mac to jump out 10 frames. If you're on a Windows, shift page down or page up will jump you down or up the timeline by 10 frames. 
Um, and I'm going to hit B for beginning. And you'll see that now your timeline starts here. All right. And this just shows that now these keyframes are not going to be in our timeline. So we're not going to mess with them at all. Um, but at least it means that they are now going to be um, blocked for us. Okay, and then I'm going to create some dead keyframes or some blank keyframes and just sort of just click on these little diamonds here to again just start it from scratch. All right, and this is just going to mean that once we apply easing to these keyframes, they're not going to accidentally read these keyframes at all. Okay, even if we do accidentally add easing to those. Okay, so we've got our initial blocking. Uh, I'm going to jump our 10 frames again. And I'm going to start placing my character into a position where it looks like he's pushing a wall, for example. So depending on what your footage looks like, you'll base your blocking or rigging on that. Um, but you can just follow along the principle of what I'm showing now, and you should have the basics for it. Okay, so I'm going to just quickly hit view, and I'm going to hit clear guides, because there are some guides in here that um, weren't hidden before. And then I'll hit view, um, uh, show rulers, Command or Control R, these will pop up and I can then just drag out a marker to essentially just um, give me an idea of where this wall in inverted commas will be. Okay, so the first thing I can do is I'm not going to have my character be in this um, sort of T pose. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rig up our character so that he's in a neutral standing pose. All right, so 90 degrees on that arm. Holding down shift and using my arrow keys, I can just move my arm into the correct position. Let me hit Command or Control A here and hit U. And that will just collapse all of my layers for me quickly. Um, grab this and take a look at the controller for our right arm. So that's layer 32. I'll just type in 90 degrees there. And I'm going to lift the position of that arm, excuse me, slightly higher to sort of sell the idea of that foreshortening. All right, so see how then it's not directly in line with the other foot, ah, the other hand, sorry. Where's my mind today? Um, and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm also going to grab layer 65, um, and I'm gonna shift that up slightly, but I also need to grab the foot controller. So that's layer 57 and 65, and I'm gonna move those up ever so slightly, like so. All right, and that just gives us the idea of the foreshortening as well. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, ba -ba -bum, now that I have set this, these keyframes, jump out of near the 10, um, and let's start off with some rotation. All right, so I'm just gonna get my arm into like its basic position, like so. And then I'm going to adjust the hips. So I want my character to essentially be leaning into the wall at this point. All right, so I'm not doing any in-betweens. I'm not going to focus on him getting to the wall. For now, I'm going to focus on his reaction to already being with the wall. Okay, so this foot, for example, I might actually move slightly forward and then bend the knee. And that's going to sell the idea that he's putting a bit of weight into it. Um, I can rotate his head with my layer 19, the God controller head. Let's add a little bit of rotation to that. Okay. Um, and then also then just grab our neck position, lean that forward a little bit. And then I can grab the head and move the position as well. All right. And I can grab layer 26, the bottom of the head, add a little bit, sorry, not uh, rotation position rather. Um, we can sort of just suck that back into the body like so. And I can move the tip of my head to push my head down slightly. All right, then I can grab the God uh, controller for my right arm, layer 32. And I can bring that rotation up slightly like so. Okay, so like negative 15, for example. And because we don't see the shoulder, we can actually push the, the shoulder up behind the head a little bit more to help sell the idea that um, we've got that shoulder like lifted up in its position. Okay, um, I'm gonna bend this elbow up slightly. I want it to look as though he's pushing um, with a bent arm um, sort of from above, trying to get a higher angle. And I can bring my right elbow down to simulate the idea of pushing uh, correctly as well. Okay. And because we're working with a cartoon character, it's not going to be too big an issue if we sort of foreshorten or like bend his arms, squash his arms a little bit. Um, okay. Then what we want to do is we want to rotate 
the wrist controller. So that's layer 35, just straighten our hand there. And then layer five, rotation, let's bend that arm slightly. Alrighty, so now I need him to be interacting with my imaginary wall. So I'm just going to move him forward. And sometimes if you select the controller, it will accidentally move like the previous keyframe. So we just need to make sure that we select it again and adjust it accordingly. Okay, and holding down shift, I can make sure that he moves along the correct axis, like in a perfect straight line. Okay, so he's like so. Cool. So this is my initial block. If I jump back 10 frames, this is what he looks like. Jump forward 10 frames, he's interacting with that wall. All right, I'm going to jump 10 frames further. And now we will have to go back and add some keyframes to allow for tweaking. Um, but that is in the next sort of level of animation or the next slice of the animation. Okay, so 10 frames out, um, I'm going to adjust him again. And this time, um, I'm going to have him sort of move uh, like away from the wall. So it's like so putting his back into it. Uh, let me shift the shoulder up a little bit. I can straighten that arm out like so. Um, and I kind of want to give the sense that he's really putting some effort into this now. All right, so I'm going to bend this knee out. I'm actually going to grab the hip controller and I'm going to shift that. Right, so not the gut controller, just layer 54, change the actual hip. All right, um, I can bend this knee slightly on the right. Let me move my shoe backwards slightly on the right side, like so. Um, all righty, and then we can adjust his torso slightly. So if he's sort of straightening his back into it, um, then we can rotate the pelvis like so. And that's just kind of giving the idea that he's bent his bum according to his torso as well. All right, let's straighten his arms so that it looks as though he's really getting in there. Okay, so like so, let's bring this arm down slightly. Okay, um, I can, for example, bend his head forwards. I could bend it backwards if he was sort of straining uh, his head or sort of arching his back a bit more. Let's do something like that. You can try and push that out a little bit more even. Grab the head bottom layer, layer 26, drag that into the body again so that it makes, you know, we don't have our layers clipping outside of it. All right, and now we've got a completely different pose, which is really nice. Um, don't worry about the hands, right? Um, these hands weren't necessarily built to interact with objects such as walls. For this hand, for example, it would be hiding behind the actual object that you're interacting with at this point. And then for this one, we're just gonna get away with adjusting the rotation as necessary. Um, maybe we can hide the thumb behind that object as well. And it will just look as though he's got his fingers on the outside of the object and his thumb on the inside. Um, but we can cross that bridge when we get there with our final animation. Okay, um, so that's what we've got there. And then we could obviously shift up our um, sort of guard controller for all the layers if he were, for example, to be pushing into that and then like slipping, right? So if he's interacting with an immovable object, um, then, you know, he would push himself backwards. Okay, so now we want to make sure that our feet are looking good because we know that, um, well, we'll see in a moment that just because this is bent doesn't mean it's not clipping outside of the shoe. All right, so the easiest way to sort of make sure that you can see your assets without um, getting confused by all the controllers, excuse me, sitting on top of them, is we can use our friend Duik. All right, so if we jump into the fourth panel of Duik, it's the controllers. I want to make sure that I don't have anything selected. And I can then choose show hide, and that will show and hide my controllers. If I have a co controller selected, show hide will affect only that one, none of them selected, and you'll have all of them on and off. Okay, so let's turn it off quickly and let's take a look. Okay, so our ankle is clipping through our shoe. Same thing's happening over here. So what we should do is add a little bit of rotation to these elements. So I'm just gonna zoom into our shoe over here. Um, I'll grab our God controller, so that's layer 36. Add a little bit of rotation to that, like so. All right, and if my ankle is still sort of coming out of the shoe, I can always grab the ankle controller, so that would be ba -ba -ba, layer 56, um, and I can just move that down into the shoe a little bit. Okay, um, and you'll see that then I've also provided controllers for the toes, the middle and the heel of the foot. All right, so if I jump back to my initial position, 
In fact, we could go back to, I'm just jumping down my timeline here, go back to uh, the very first or second set of keyframes that I've made where I set him into his neutral pose. I can bring my rulers down and I can block out where those feet are, where they touch the ground. And this way we're not going to have our feet sort of sliding through the floor every time we try to move. Okay, so we are at this position over here. Let's find it, yep. Okay, so I want my toes to kind of be bent up like that, right? So it looks as though our shoe is actually tilting or reacting to the tilt. Um, so I can just move my shoe like that. And then I can grab my God controller for that shoe and just move it up so that the toes are still touching this particular floor. All right, this shoe over here, we're not gonna do too much with it. Um, we maybe can sell the idea that he's lifting his heel off the floor like so. Um, we can also grab the ankle controller for this leg, which is layer 71, uh, sorry, 72, and I can just make sure to shift that so it stays inside of the shoe as well. Um, and if I do want to sort of bend my ankle a little bit more, I can. I can also bend my toes a little bit and I can shift the middle of my shoe back slightly. Okay, so if I take a look at that, we now look as though our character has got his heel slightly lifted off the ground. I could probably stand to move that ankle controller layer 55 a little bit deeper. Oop, not that one. Uh, the ankle layer 56, a little bit deeper into the shoe. All right, and that's going to allow it to still look as though he's not falling out of his shoes. Okay, uh, we can also then just quickly check the leg. So if I just quickly bring all these back again, I can just check my hip controller for my left leg um, and I can just take that back up into the body wherever I need it to. Okay, so now we've got our second power pose or our hero keyframe pose. All right, and then I can change it again. So let's say, for example, uh, he wants to bring this leg forward and we're going to put all of our weight into that foot there. All right, this foot on the right, we're going to move to the back. Okay, so how I would go about doing that is uh, let's just quickly change up his torso pose also. Um, so let's bring it slightly forward like this. All right, so he's going to be really straining into this position. Uh, maybe now he's given up pushing, for example, and he's pulling at this point. Kind of would make sense. Okay, guard controller for the head. Uh, let's add some rotation to that. Um, and we can then move it deep into the body. We can grab the head controller, the bottom head controller, shift that into the body. Let's tilt his head back slightly as well. Okay, so he's really getting in there. Um, and I can then just move this slightly. Okay. Um, then we can add some, just a little bit more bend to the elbows. Uh, let's rotate our wrists again. So you see, it's, it's just um, kind of thinking about how our body works, um, what drives what, uh, and then figuring out how that's been translated into this rig. All right, so for example, we've got our collar sort of sticking out of our body here, uh, which is not what we want. So let me grab the bottom of my head and just drag that back in, and there we go, we've got a nice bend to it. Okay, so let's change legs. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm first going to grab the guard hip controller, um, which is my layer 65, and my shoe controller, uh, which is layer 57. Okay, so layer 57, layer 65, um, and we're just going to drag those and move them, maybe just out the way for now even. All right, so we'll just get them there. Uh, let's grab the God controller for my left leg, which is my layer 53, uh, and then our shoe layer, which is layer 36. All right, so layer 53, layer 36. And we're going to move those uh, forward. Ba -ba -ba, just not accidentally select one of the keyframes. So we're gonna move that forward there. I'm gonna get my shoe into the right position before I play with my knees. Um, because whatever I do, the shoe is going to affect it anyway and <laughs> break his leg clearly. So I'm going to get my shoe into the right position and then I can move my knee. Um, let's think about this. Maybe we adjust the rotation slightly so that our foot is not as sort of bent. Let's grab our hip controller and we can shift that up into the torso a little bit more. 
um, bring the toes down, right? So maybe we bring the heels down as well, putting a lot of force into this, sort of grounding himself. And I'm just using shift and my arrow keys to get this in the position that I want. Okay, so my knee's there. Let's grab my ankle and shift that back into the shoe. Okay, and now we can grab our disembodied leg and shoe and we can just move those back into here, for example. Uh, we wanna move it back up onto its correct plane. Okay, so we can move our hip up into, the, into that body there. Uh, and let's actually straighten this leg out. All right, so sort of bend at the knee. Um, our assets, our leg assets getting in the way. So I'm just gonna quickly unhide this, find that layer and lock it. Okay, grab the knee. Let's say he's pushing with a straight leg. He's really putting all of his effort and energy into sort of bending his leg out in a pose like so. Okay, um, and obviously his foot would react to that. So we're gonna have to rotate our shoe like so. Uh, and this is going to make sure that our heel is off the floor. Um, we can then grab our toes. Let's bring those up. Maybe we grab the middle of the shoe and just shift it back by a little bit. Okay, show hide. Um, haha, made the same mistake. Deselect, show hide. Okay, that's actually looking pretty good. Um, and then, okay, so he's putting his back into this particular pose. Um, and obviously his facial expressions aren't <laughs> garnered towards showing that he's putting a lot of effort into this. Um, but, you know, if we turn the face off, he's just gonna look like a little cucumber guy. Um, okay, so let's quickly bring all of these back up again. Um, so from this pose, let's say, for example, we move him even further down the line. Uh, let's straighten our arms again. Like so, uh, let's grab our guard head rotator. Let me bend his head slightly. And I'm gonna have him hunch his shoulders at this point. All right, um, so let's do this, leaning forward. Like so, let's grab our hips. Move them sort of to there. Um, yep. And then we can grab the sort of stomach one and we can just push it up so it looks as though his torso is really being pushed. We can grab the controller for those hips and just bring his like shirt a little bit higher. We can bring our torso a little bit higher. Um, might need to fix a little bit of parenting for that. We'll see. Um, if, if we do, I'll upgrade the file for you guys. Move these up into the hip um, and move that up into the hip like so. Okay, and like I said, because he's a cartoon character, we can kind of get away with a little bit of over-exaggeration, not too much. So we're just gonna grab our sort of main controller, shift that up a little bit. Um, we can move our arms back. We remember that our scapula are sort of flexible. We can shift them up and down and backward and forward in our body. Layer 32 for the back of our right arm. Let's move that sort of there. Uh, we can bend that elbow and bring his wrist back a little bit. We keep his arm nice and long, actually. Why not? Um, it's going to be hidden behind that object anyway, like so. Okay, so there I've got him now doing his push. Um, and if I end my timeline here, so let me just drag that out slightly more. Um, you'll see now that I can start my animation from the very beginning, which is him in his rest pose. And then I have him going through his um, sort of little push-pull exercise. Okay, so we can see that our length of the legs are getting slightly longer, all right? So that might be something to try and keep our eyes on. But at the end of the day, if our object is correctly lifting or trying to push or move uh, an object correctly, um, we can get away with a little bit of over-exaggeration and stretch in the limbs, all right? So that's basically it. Blocking is kind of one of the easiest steps, I think. Um, if you guys know of a, a better way, then by all means, drop me a line. Um, I'm kind of just making this up as I go based off what I know. Um, and I'm obviously still learning. So if you come up with a better way, if you find a tutorial with a better way, please do like share the link below. Um, otherwise, yeah, I'll check you guys in, uh, in class this week. And um, good luck. Let me know if you need help. Ciao.